Hey guys, welcome to part one of my Halo CE Basics Guide. Uh, the Basics Guide is intended for people that are familiar with Halo, but have little to no experience playing Halo 1. Uh, Halo 1 is very different from all the other Halos, so uh, this series will help get you up to speed on the original. Uh, in this particular video, I'm going to break down each of the weapons and explain the key differences between this Halo and the later ones. If we're talking about Halo 1, then you have to start with the pistol. It's the most important part of the game. Press Y when you spawn to switch to it. Don't let the secondary slot fool you. This will be your primary weapon. The pistol is the utility weapon, kind of like the jack of all trades weapon. It can kill in just three hits if the last shot is a headshot, but a perfect kill is much harder to get than in other Halos. The pistol will give you a good chance in any situation, but it is never the best tool for the job. The shotgun, assault rifle, plasma pistol, and plasma rifle all beat it up close if used correctly. The rockets beat it at mid-range, and the sniper beats it at long range. But make no mistake, you will be getting at least 90% of your kills in this game with the pistol. And unlike other Halos, you can outshoot multiple enemies at once if your shot and your strafe are good enough. The important thing to consider with the pistol is that it is a projectile weapon, so you need to lead your shots. Unlike Halo 2, Reach, and 4, this is not a hit scan weapon. So just because your reticle is red when you fire does not guarantee it will hit him. And the further away your target is, the more you need to lead. This makes strafing incredibly effective and important in pistol fights. Just because the pistol can kill in three shots doesn't mean it does usually. It's quite common for pistol fights to use most of the magazine if both players are strafing well. So you can see how the skill ceiling with the pistol is quite high. If you've played Halo 3, you're a step ahead here, except you can't use the burst to sweep for a headshot. Just picture a mix between the Halo 3 BR and the Reach DMR, and you've pretty much got it. The pistol can fire if you hold in the trigger, but don't. Not only is your rate of fire slower, but your shots are much, much less accurate. Pull the trigger separately for each shot. A handy tip for finishing your kills is to aim very high on the head. Use the tick mark at the bottom of the circle to line up your shot. Killing you can take spree. advantage of some bullet magnetism by pulling the shots down to ensure that you do not hit a body instead of the head. The assault rifle is the weapon you will have out when you spawn. Think of the assault rifle as your sidearm. While not nearly as versatile as the pistol, the assault rifle does have several important uses. It is very strong and reliable up close, so it's not a bad idea to switch to it up close instead of forcing yourself to land difficult, perfect pistol shots. It's great for finishing kills when you run out of pistol ammo. Remember to pump the trigger a bit for better accuracy if you're finishing mid-range kills. Running riot. The AR can help you find a camo player by spamming an area and pinging his shield. It's very easy to melee with the AR because it has an extremely quick melee animation. The time between the press of the button till when it does damage is much shorter than the pistol, and especially something like the plasma rifle or the sniper. In addition to its quicker melee animation, the assault rifle also has a slightly farther reach than the pistol, making it an excellent melee weapon. And lastly, because the assault rifle is an unscopable weapon, you can quick camo with it, but I'll get into, get into that more in a later video. For now, just remember that the assault rifle can help you return to full camo quicker than the pistol will. Abandon the Halo 3 stigma of the assault rifle here. This is not a noob weapon. It has lots of great uses, and it will prove to be the right weapon for the job several times a game. Think before trading it out. The rocket launcher is the most important item in the game. It is by far the most powerful weapon. It is very easy to use, doing huge splash damage to an enormous blast radius. Simply jump and aim for the feet. The skill with the rockets isn't in using them, it's in getting them. The rockets spawn every two minutes on most maps and because they are so crucial and easy to use, they will dictate the flow of combat. 
Rockets trump everything. Treat this as the most important thing on the map. When using rockets, it is important to keep its blast radius in mind. It is easy to kill yourself if you're not careful. When shooting players close to you, aim for the ground behind them instead of at their feet. The Halo 1 rockets have a much slower rate of fire. Keep this delay in mind before taking your first shot, as you may not have time for a second one. When shooting players near ledges, you can usually kill them by shooting the wall underneath them. You can use grenades to blow items to yourself from remote locations. I'll cover this more in a later video, but for now, look for at least one way to grenade rockets to yourself on every map. The sniper rifle is the only weapon in the game designed for long-range combat. Just like other Halos, it will kill with one headshot or two body shots. The Halo 1 sniper has a very fast rate of fire, which will sometimes make two quick body shots a better option than lining up a headshot. Like the pistol, shots must be led in front of moving targets, which can make it challenging to use. Unlike later Halos, the sniper is not regarded as a must-have power weapon on a lot of maps, because it is so difficult to use. The game regards it as simply a long-range weapon alternative, allowing it to spawn every 30 seconds on most maps, so it will usually be available when you want it. Just don't expect it to be as dominant as it is in every other Halo. It is easily challenged by the pistol on most maps, and it is extremely hard to no-scope in Halo 1, by far the hardest no-scopes in the series. Just like in Halo 2, there is no red reticle for no-scopes, only in this game you still have to lead, and you'll also have less time to line up your no-scopes because of how quick the pistol can kill you. So don't expect to be able to rely on no-scoping in Halo 1. The Halo 1 sniper is best used when your target doesn't see you, because it is so hard to use under fire. Once your target reacts to your shots, starts strafing, and shooting back, expect your kill to get a lot tougher. Difficulty aside, the sniper is a dominant weapon on some maps more so than others, especially when paired with camo. Hang'em High, Derelict, and Damnation are all good examples of maps where camo sniper can be more important than rockets. The shotgun is the ultimate up-close weapon. It can one-hit kill from a good range, and two-hit kill from even farther, and can kill shieldless players from much farther than you'd think. Great for cleaning up body shots from a sniper. It also has a deep clip, so re reloading will almost never be an issue with it. If you can start a fight at close to mid-close range, a shotgun user will almost always win. On maps with a lot of closer engagements like Longest and Chill Out, the shotgun is devastating. Don't treat this weapon as just a close range niche weapon like in other Halos. It is much more powerful and versatile here. I will always trade my assault rifle for a shotgun if I come across one. The plasma rifle is a flanker's dream weapon. It rewards sneaky play by stunning the victim, causing him to move and turn slower. If you can approach from the side, you can close in and melee before your opponent can turn to face you. In my opinion, the plasma rifle is one of the funnest ways to get kills in the game. It's definitely a niche weapon, but it is fantastic when used correctly. The plasma rifle, like all plasma weapons, also does huge damage to overshields, so it's a great idea to pick one up if you know your opponent has OS. A little known fact about this weapon is that it does extra damage to the head, so always aim high with it, especially if you can't close in for the melee. You'll use the plasma pistol very similarly to the plasma rifle, except you'll need to tap the trigger quickly to get the stun effect. Holding in the trigger will charge the pistol for a full shield wipe like it does in other Halo games, but it doesn't track very well. It might be the worst tracking in the series. The charge shot is best used on someone running away from you, standing still, or that is very distracted, because it's very easy to dodge if you know it's coming. Unlike the plasma rifle, this weapon does not do extra headshot damage, and shots are not a reliable way to finish your kill before it overheats. Use this weapon in conjunction with a melee, or even a frag grenade if you have them trapped. The last weapon in the game is the Needler. 
This is by far the worst weapon in not only the game, but the entire series. It is almost impossible to get a kill with this weapon on a real opponent, because the tracking is unbelievably bad, and it takes quite a few needles for a super combine. The only way I can conceive of this weapon being useful is if you see a sniper standing still from mid to long range, not looking at you. The needler will home in on a target beyond red reticle range, provided he not move at all. In this extremely situational circumstance, the needler could kill him before he can react. But I'm grasping at straws with this thing. It's pretty much useless. You can't even quick camo with it. Use this only when trying to humiliate your opponent. That'll do it for my weapon guide. Stay tuned for the next episode where I'll go over the melee and grenade mechanics.